Meditation does not cause nightmares. <laughs> do not worry. Do not worry. Um, it's not one of the side effects of meditation. There's a lot of possible explanations for this particular circumstance of a young woman who started meditating and found herself having nightmares. And a piece of it may simply be that her consciousness is opening. I read actually just today, I read a story of a, a woman who was a, a very, very deep spiritual seeker who was a meditator and who had gone to some people's home for dinner and they had, had fed her non-vegetarian food, they had fed her chicken. And she was a vegetarian otherwise, but she didn't want to make a big fuss and, you know, and so she thought, let me just be polite and eat the chicken. And in the nighttime, and so she ate it, and in the night she had this horrible, horrible nightmare of being hung upside down by her feet and of being skinned and ultimately of having her throat cut. And in her dream, she didn't identify it at all with, you know, the people whose house she had been at and what she had eaten. And it wasn't until the next day when she was sharing this very, very unusual nightmare with her spiritual counsel, who had asked her a lot of different questions about what might have caused that. And he was able to put together the experience that she had had of eating the chicken with the nightmare that she had had of literally being a chicken. And the, the moral of the story that I was reading has to do with the way that we take in the consciousness of other beings. And so if you've been meditating and if your consciousness is, is expanding and is open, and you are interacting with people, or interacting with animals, or interacting with the planet in a way that is not necessarily in line with the highest consciousness, it wouldn't surprise me if that, if that found you in your sleep. And so for example, if she's been meditating but Along with her meditation, perhaps she hasn't changed her shopping habits. And so, for example, perhaps her shopping habits still include this craving for more and more and more, cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And as we buy more and more and more, cheaper and cheaper, what we're doing is contributing to a, a global economy that creates sweatshops, and a global economy that creates child labor, and a global economy that's ravaging our, our earth. And so to have nightmares about that, even if she's not necessarily aware that that's what the nightmares are about, but simply to, for example, find herself in an unsafe situation in her nightmare, well, if she's been meditating, I mean, remember, our rishis, our sages, our saints, our mystics, our gurus, our masters keep telling us over and over again in every language, in a thousand different ways, just like parents trying to shove spinach down our throats in some way or the other because they know it's good for our bodies and they're doing it because they know it's crucial for our spiritual development, have been trying to convince us Separation is an illusion. We're all one. It's all divine. We're all spirit. I mean, this is, this is the fundamental teaching of all of our spiritual traditions. And so to begin meditating and start having nightmares would mean to me that what's happening is her consciousness is opening her awareness is opening, her experience of being connected to the world is opening, and yet her own personal actions or choices are not yet perhaps exactly in alignment 
with what she knows to be the highest dharmic way of living, the highest truth. And that could cause, on an unconscious psychological level, the conflict that in her nightmare she's experiencing what, through her unconscious choices, she's actually creating in the world. So even though she may not be going out and harming someone, and before meditating, her consciousness perhaps was closed enough that she felt that she wasn't impacted by that. And now as the consciousness opens, we start to, to really feel, really feel the pain of others. Really feel the impact of what we're doing on the world. I mean, there's, there's a fantastic story of Paramhans Ramakrishna of the, the great, great mystic. And one day, some of his devotees were looking for him. They had gone to the temple to find him. He wasn't in the temple. And they go searching, and they can't find him anywhere. And finally, they find him, and he's lying down in a field, making all these like weird, weird noises, not speaking you know, proper language. And gathered around him are all these bunny rabbits. And... He's speaking just funny, funny noises. And the bunny rabbits then go. And he keeps lying in the field and the devotees are watching. And a few moments later from the other side, these snakes appear. And he's still speaking funny noises, but now different funny noises. And finally his devotees come up to him because they get nervous, of course, seeing the snakes come near him. Bunny rabbits were okay, but snakes is scary. So the devotees come up and they say, you know, please, please, what are you doing? And he says, well, you see, the snakes keep eating the bunny rabbits. And it's really not very nice because they're eating way more bunny rabbits than they need to take care of their hunger. And the bunny rabbits are very scared. And the bunny rabbits also have a right to life. And so I was negotiating a, a settlement, if you were, between the snakes and the bunny rabbits. I mean, the snakes, of course, have to live, so we have to accept that they can eat bunny rabbits where necessary, but only where necessary. So I was negotiating this, this settlement. And I love that story because the idea of a man being able in bunny rabbit and snake language to negotiate a settlement between them is, I mean, it's the stuff that children's stories are made of. It's not, it's not the stuff that as adults we believe, but it happened. I mean, he was a mystic, but he was a, an actual historical figure who lived not that long ago. And there's lots of books by lots of disciples who were with him. And this is what happened. And the reason I love the story is, for me, it's one of the most undeniable, palpable examples and pieces of evidence of how when we are really spiritually aligned, how intricately connected we are with the rest of the natural world and how, yeah, we can communicate. That may not necessarily be the goal, but at least the awareness that we have that ability that we are so deeply connected to the natural world that, of course, whatever is happening in the natural world is going to impact me in my unconscious, in my subconscious, in my dreams. So that would be perhaps where nightmares come after beginning a meditative practice.